structures of big parties are for transaction and exist to make Nigerians suffering worse. Summary, welcome to the news end. Thank you for tuning in to listen. Omayele summary contends that the big political structures exist are for transaction and make Nigeria's suffering worse. According to African Action Congress, presidential candidates Omayele summary the political structures of the so-called big parties are not there to improve Nigerians' quality of life. Summary asserted that all of Nigeria's significant political institutions were created for commercial transaction in an interview aired on a rise television on Sunday. His words, I want to correct the impression that our structures are not as strong as that of any candidate. Some of the things that I was saying in 2019 have become the sing-song of new participants now that the Nigerian political structure is touted as big structure, but they are all structures that were designed for transactions, he said. According to the human rights activists, the so-called political structures have added misery to Nigerians through years of bad leadership and also affirmed that he was the first person that introduced a new kind of structure, which is the people. Okay, um, let me say this. Uh, Somare is saying, so people who are always coming out to sing of structure, 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 that, um, you know, these people exist just to... Which English in speak there so that I know we we'll speak tomorrow tense or misquote him. They say exist to there is there for transactions. I would have loved to ask this question: What transaction is he talking about? And make Nigerians suffering worse. Hmm. You know this. I believe this is an interview, and they just gave us you know just the tip of the iceberg. This guy needs to be rewarded with his doggedness for fighting the good governance and against against the political imposters and criminals. Oh, so you're saying he needs to be rewarded for good governance. How? No, when you, when, when you, you cannot take it away. Sumare, you know, has always has this. Uh, he's standing out. He's fighting for... Ah, the guy, the try. I won't lie to you. He's doing things and fighting for his human... This right against, you know, his fight for human... This activist he's doing... He's really, really doing. He's really, has, he has really been helpful. You know, you cannot take that away from him at all. You certainly cannot take that away from him. So this particular issue now, this issue of, uh, what's it called? Coming out to say this. I wish, you know, I could hear from him one-on-one -on -one to find out. He's going to tell us what exactly he means by structures of the bigger parties are that it exists to make Nigerian suffering worse. Of course, the uh, suffering was yes, but the transaction part is what I am not quite sure of. I'm not quite sure of. But the truth be told is that a lot of things are happening in this pre-election area that I'm even saying, I hope that Nigerians are weak and are seeing what is happening so that you're not going to say, ah, I did not know that this particular candidate or this particular party, this is how they are, or, you know, a lot of things have happened that should have been, should have been what I call um, a wake-up call. You know, maybe you are following this person before, or you used to support a particular person, and something happened, and you are now you went back and you say, ah, is this person I was supporting? You know, you know, we are supposed to make sure we wear microscopic lens to see if someone really, really, really is for us or against us. There are people who are campaigning just to win an election, and there are people who are campaigning for us to get a better country. Let us know the difference between the two and make sure we vote for the person who is campaigning for Nigeria to become a better place. Like I said, there are people who are campaigning solely for just winning the election. They're all about, you know, let's win the election, you know, let's, let's get back power, you know, let us retain power. And at the end of the day, you know, that's it. There are people who do not, who have not even started thinking of what they're going to do for Nigeria. Like I said, the APC, let me even call, you know, the APC, they are all about retaining power. They are not even about what I'm going to do for the country, what, what the country is going to gain. Mm -mm. They're about want to retain power, you know. Because if you ask me, I have been saying it for a very long time that I, I am sincerely waiting for what the APC manifesto is going to be on about. Because... If you look around you, I mean, if you do a survey, go to a particular area, 
ask some, quest ask some questions about, you know, how the APC has performed and if people want them to continue. I mean, you will find the answers or, yes, you'll find the answers to the questions yourself. You will see that Omo, these people, they never perform well. So what does it tell you? What exactly does it tell you? You'll be asking people, people, I'm sure I'm not the only one asking what exactly they're going to be campaigning with because, believe you me, they are, how am I going to put it? The, uh, the areas where they did not do well are certainly more than the areas where they do well. Okay? This guy needs to be rewarded for his economics for fighting for good governance and against our political imposters and criminals. However, he should parley with Obi since he since that is a natural and clear sign of an inevitable revolution owing to a present taste of politicians. So as to change the narrative, well, it is his choice. I don't think he wants to parley with anyone. He wants to, but I don't think he wants to. I don't think his goal is parleying with anyone. He has come out in one or two times to oppose, you know now, other candidates. Oppose, uh, what's it called, the candidacy of OB. And of course, it's what is expected now. You're not going to come out and loud, you know, you you know, it's not, it's not, it's, you hardly see people coming out so loud, uh, what's it called, other, the arrivals, um, what's it called, um, uh, achievements, you know, you don't see that. Well, like I said before, Somore, yes, he has really tried when it comes to this uh, human rights activism, he has done a really good job. But the thing is, is he capable is it capable of making the, the, the kind of president that Nigeria needs? Nigeria needs a president who is dojet. Nigeria needs a president who is healthy, who is strong, who is capable, who it is his sole wish that Nigeria becomes a better country and that he is part of the people that makes it happen. So there are two people, there are two types of candidates. The candidate that wants the Nigeria to be a better place and is willing to put in all the work is willing to give it a go. Is willing to, you know, walk up, walk, sweat it out to make sure Nigeria is a better country. There are people who just want, you know, they want to use mouth. They will use mouth. Tell us, say, no worry. Say Nigeria will do better. Meanwhile, deep down, they don't have any plans at all. They have any agenda to make Nigeria a better country. So we should make sure, like I said earlier before, maybe we wear our microscopic lens or glasses to make sure, say, we we'll see person we really mean well for our country, and not just see we. We, we stand behind the person, vote for the person, and come to the tree. Now, when we pick candidates, we good. Then we go feed Neil Dan, tell Baba go there. Smell the candidates, make it remember this section. It will happen. But if you pick candidates where they're bad, <laughs> uh, and come to the tell Baba go there, say, I beg, make the person they good. Our prayer point will still be, you know, make the person they good. So let us make sure we get the right person for the right candidate come 2023. Okay.